About two months ago, I gave you a tour of Berm Peak, the new home of this YouTube channel. Since then, we did a series of home improvement projects such as a workbench, a BMX ramp, and an office. We even built a mountain bike wash station. But we were only laying the groundwork for the trail building projects in the woods. That starts today. I think this area here is where I want the actual trailhead to be, the clearing where we're gonna congregate before hitting a trail. Every trail on Berm Peak will start at the highest point on the property, and that's in Stumpthorn. The only evidence of humans ever being here is from property surveys. All the flags eventually become trash. So to flag my trail, I opted for this paint, which is designed for marking grass. To be honest, it doesn't feel right painting out here, but without some kind of visual aid, I won't remember where the trail is supposed to go. If you know an alternative, I'm open to suggestions. The route is simple. Start at the southwest corner of the yard and zigzag our way to Berm Peak Peak. Since that's where all our trails will start, it's the trailhead. So what we're building today is in fact a climbing trail to the trailhead. To build it, we'll need to prune a whole lot of rhododendron, aggressively. I intentionally planned this route through shrubs and deadwood, so I wouldn't need to cut away any of the tree canopy. These loppers will cut branches up to two inches in diameter, with surprisingly little effort. They're also great for chopping the brush piles into smaller pieces, so they take up less space. These loppers will remain out in the elements indefinitely, as I continue building and maintaining these trails. So a year from now, I'll update you on how they're doing. Of all the hand tools we're using, the machete is the lightest and most versatile. Given a lifetime of hacking and enough motivation, you could fell a redwood with a machete. But it really shines on stuff one inch in diameter or smaller. You can even make multiple cuts in one swing, which I think is one of the machete's main advantages. But for bigger stuff, the machete definitely takes some time. So I'm using a cordless reciprocating saw. You may have heard this referred to as a sawzall, but that's actually a trademarked name for Milwaukee brand reciprocating saws. These can be used for everything from plumbing to demolition, depending on what blade you install. Mine is fitted with a nine inch pruning blade, which you can get just about anywhere. The speed, capability, and small size of this tool make it great for cutting shrubbery. Still, some of you might be wondering why I don't use a chainsaw. Well, chainsaws require a fair bit of gear to use in a video. I don't need captain safety on my case every time I cut a one inch branch without chaps. I get enough comments from Captain Obvious, Captain Planet, and Captain Building Inspector. On the other hand, the reciprocating saw is low risk. I can hand it to anyone, show them where the trigger is, and let them figure out the rest. Removing all this brush is known as clearing corridor, and for trails like this one, it's 90% of the work. It's not steep here, there won't be any real features on this trail, and drainage is just not an issue. Once this is cleared, I'll have very little to do to make it rideable. But you know there's more to it than that. A well-marked trail system is easy to navigate, so I'll be making signs for everything in the Burn Peak Ranger District. The Berm Peak Express leads directly to the trailhead, and it's rated easy with a green circle. To install this sign, we can either dig a hole or keep hitting it until it cooperates.
I've got a better idea. In the past, I've installed these fiberglass markers by hitting them with a block of wood. So I'm making a purpose-built hammer out of this piece of 2x6 scrap. We'll call it the trail hazer. For some reason, this trail hazer works really well. And when all is said and done, the wood gets damaged and the sign doesn't. Since we're building something next week at the trailhead, it needs to have a spacious clearing. I chose this spot for its elevation and for the fact that it's adjacent to the property line. Since the property line has been partially cleared already, I can walk it to access different parts of Berm Peak. It's kind of like a fire road that goes around the property. Now to install one more sign. This one will welcome visitors to the trailhead and on the other side mark the upper entrance to Burn Peak Express. Well, I guess the trail hazer wasn't such a good idea after all. Now that we've cleared corridor, all we need to do is rake away the leaves. building berms and jumps on this trail, we need to cut past the topsoil and get down to the clay. But in this case, that isn't important. Loam will do just fine. In fact, I really want to enjoy this topsoil while it lasts, and let the trail get worn in naturally. If any ruts or drainage issues develop, I can just alter the trail to make things work. Now that all the cutting and raking is finished, let's have a look at the Berm Peak Express. From the trailhead, it starts off mellow and then makes a right-hand turn. It gets a little steeper and makes another right into a zigzaggy section before a dead tree. I'm leaving that. Then there's a log to hop over and you're at the entrance. It may be short, but the Berm Peak Express is very important, as it will mark the beginning of any loop on Berm Peak. It is, after all, the climb to the summit. I guess this loam feels like carpet to drama because he suddenly wants to chase bikes and act like a dog out here. Obviously, the Berm Peak Express would be a lot more fun to descend with a little shaping. But once we start building out here, there won't be any reason to ride down this. At the end of the day, it's more of an access road for getting to the trailhead, or bringing supplies into the woods. One of the ways I've been doing that is with the Enduro Wheelbarrow. Last year, we built the Endure Barrow out of some old bike parts, a plastic tub, and some ingenuity. Back on Berm Creek, the disc brake allowed us to transport really heavy things down the steep slope. Out here, we may have a need for that, but not as much as carrying all the peripherals, like gloves, safety glasses, drinking water, camera gear, batteries, and power tools. We may need to make some changes to the Endure Barrow, for all this stuff, a compartment makes a lot more sense, especially since the lid will keep water out. Since we will be working from the top down, the disc brake still comes in handy. To transport shovels and rakes, I'm installing two pieces of PVC on the sides. The pipes are being bolted on. So to keep water out of the compartment, I'm using O-rings between the pipe and the compartment to make a seal. And there it is, the Endure Barrow version 2. It actually looks kind of menacing. Maybe we'll call it the shovel cannon?
In any case, this is going to come in handy when spending days at a time on projects out here. I'm not interested in carrying the stuff back and forth every day, as we'll be moving progressively farther from the trailhead. With this mobile job site cart, a climbing trail to the summit, and an official trailhead, we're ready to start building the good stuff. Even after just a few days, the tread is beginning to wear in nicely. From here, we'll build a fun, sessionable loop at the top. It'll descend east across Stumpthorn, and then climb back up to the trailhead via the Burn Peak Express. In the next video, we'll find out why I left such a large clearing up here. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you're new here, consider checking out the Berm Peak playlist so you know what this is all about. Also, check out the Berm Creek playlist to see everything we built in the tiny yard that came before this. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time. Come on, buddy. Come on.